ask the Lord to minister to you, not just if you're here for the first time, but just period. You know, I there's a, there's a phrase that, that goes, you know, you're preaching to the choir, but I believe the choir needs to be preached to. Yeah. Yeah. Quite often. Because sometimes familiarity causes us to no longer hear things that we're educated about, and it doesn't minister if you don't hear it anymore. That's, That's the right. truth. Right? Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. And so there is a danger in being familiar with the word to a place to where you don't hear it. Yeah. Right? Uh, and, and, and passion is birthed out of revelation. In other words, when the Lord shows you something you didn't know, it stirs something on the inside of you. But passion and revelation doesn't happen by accident. It's often the byproduct of a pursuit. Right? Mm -hmm. When you're after the Lord, he will respond to that because he's validating that. You know, he gives you the thumbs up. And, and, and then often you'll hear things and things will begin to make sense and, and clarity comes. How many could use some clarity? Yeah. Right? Well, I got good news for you. He's faithful. Right? He truly is faithful. And I think this morning I want to share one thing that happened prior to this. One, I had a dream. And, and I actually believe the refreshing oil was the dream. Because what I saw in that dream was hearts repenting and hearts shifting and changing, but I didn't know exactly what was going on. But I believe the oil of refreshing and that place of, of, of dying to self and laying self low so that the Holy Spirit can come and pour something of value and worth on the inside instead of all of the stuff you've been through occupying territory that he gave his life for. Right? Amen. That doesn't happen by accident, though. So it's a danger of being so familiar with God that you cease to have a relationship with Him and just an awareness of Him, okay? When you first got saved, there was something that refreshed you and an excitement that should have come, and maybe that wasn't that way for you, but I had a, a night and day transaction. I was definitely lost, and then I was definitely found, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> So that moment changed everything. And on the, the, along the way, because of that, <clears throat> that moment, has come learning his ways. And the best way to go about that, or one of the best ways, is to get to know the spirit of wisdom. All right? Yeah. So today I'm going to dive into the spirit of wisdom. And by no means are we ever going to get through it all. I think Wednesday I'm going to be teaching, right? Take yeah. Wednesday, yeah. so this next Wednesday. So I imagine it's going to flow over into some of that. But <clears throat> the spirit of wisdom changes everything. Right. Because it is contrary to the wisdom of man, the experience of man, the knowledge of man. Wisdom makes it so that you're able to be intelligent <laughs> and skillful yep. in your decision making. Yeah. Come on. That's right. Yeah. Just like the scripture says, he takes the foolishness of this world and then he confines the wise. That's right. In other words, it's not such a bad problem to be a fool as long as you recognize the one who's wise. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. That means nobody's at a deficit. We're all just in a place of where we need to know where to go. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wisdom, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the most valuable things that you can get from the Lord because it'll get you out of some situations that bad decisions would lead you to. There you go. Mm. Yeah. Come on. How many have made some decisions based on how you felt about it, based on how experiences were? You've, you've decided some things, and then you look back and say, oh, that was not the best thing to do. The spirit of wisdom cuts through all of that stuff of humanism and says, this right here is what you should do. And suddenly revelation comes. Oh, that's a good decision. Yeah. Right? All right, let's get into the word. I love the word. And uh, I always, you know, there's times whenever the Lord won't let me just go and read and we just do that. And I'm quoting Bible verses. But this morning, I want to take you to the word. So we read it, 
And uh, I know you know I'm not making this stuff up, but it's important that we read it. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. Technology, cooperate with me. <clears throat> All right. In Job chapter 28. You mean there's something good in Job? Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure is. Yeah. There's a lot of good nuggets in Job. With all the things to identify in Job, such as Job's famous friends. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> You're right. All right, check it out. Now, I'm going to read in the scripture before I just launch into some stuff because I want to show you the wisdom of God. All right? Verse 1, Job 28, verse 1 says, Surely there is a vein for the silver and a place for gold where they find it. Iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone. He sets an end to darkness and searches out all perfection, the stone of darkness and the shadow of death. The flood breaks out from the inhabitant, even the waters forgotten of the foot, and they are dried up and they are gone away from men. As for the earth, out of it comes bread. And under it turns up as it were fire. The stones of it are the places of sapphire, and it has the dust of gold. There is a path which no fowl knows, which the vulture's eye has not seen. The lion whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. He puts forth his hand upon the rock. He overturns the mountains by the roots. He cuts out the rivers among the rocks, and his eye sees every precious thing. He binds the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hid brings he forth to light. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knows not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Now we'll stop right there. Did you catch that? He started talking about creation. He started talking about order. This is done for this reason. This stops right here. This is found here. All these things are what he created and the function of it. Those things can be found naturally. You can even use technology and education to find all those things, but you cannot find wisdom because you exist in the earth. In other words, experience is not wisdom. Come on, that's a lot better than y'all acting like it is. See, experience is what I have learned from all I have been through. But wisdom comes in and speaks something that will keep me from growing through some more hard times. Listen, you might learn through hard things, but wisdom will keep you out of some hard things. It'll make you like you've already learned something that you didn't have to walk through. Yeah. That's a good word. Because some of the heartbreak and some of the, the stress and some of the stuff you're walking in came because you relied on your experience and your senses and not the spirit of wisdom. Because you cannot find it by rationale of looking around you. That's a good word, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> because see, what I'm telling you is, is it's going to save you some tears. It's going to save you some heartache. But the first thing you're going to have to figure out is, is you can't always trust where you've been. Yeah. Yeah. You might have learned some things, but baggage came with it. Yeah, that's it. Come on, yeah. wisdom will make you a genius without having the IQ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It will. That's good. I like that. Why? Because you got it from the all-knowing one. And he knows what he's talking about. He sees the beginning from the end. So he'll give you some wisdom, some some skill, some, some knowledge, some grace will show up right in the midst of where you are. And you may have went left and he'll say, why don't you just go right? Well, why would I go right? I always go left when I get into these moments. Well, if you go right this time right here, it's going to save you about a year of heartache. Mm -hmm. Except he doesn't always explain the why. <laughs> Usually what happens is experience looks back and says, if I'd have just done what he told me to do. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. 
I wouldn't find me in this spot right now. If I would have just said what he told me to say or not said what he told me to not say. Come on. The spirit of wisdom will make you look smart. I'm so thankful that the Lord released the spirit of wisdom and he, and he put such an emphasis on it through the scripture of its great value. Mm -hmm. See, whatever you put a value on, you will protect. Right. Come on, if you, if you had a, a 50 ounces of gold at home, you don't just lay it outside on, on the doorstep and say, hey, check it out, it's gold. No, you know that there is a cost there. You know that there is a value there and so you keep it in a safe place. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. And you're conscious of its worth. Right. But oftentimes in our intellect and in our experiences, we lean and trust into where we've been and make decisions based on what everybody else is doing or what so-and-so said. And listen, I'm not at all saying that God won't speak wisdom through somebody. He might very well. But usually when you hear God, you know it's God. Amen. That's right. One of the things that I have learned to not do is ask people their opinions. <laughs> because when you get them, it is not their fault. It's yours. You understand? You have not because you ask not, but about time you ask somebody what they think, they will tell you. Yes, they will. And unfortunately, people don't always flow in the spirit of wisdom. They flow in the spirit of, of their opinion and their experiences and their brokenness and all of that stuff. And then they'll start downloading you man's wisdom. Mm -hmm. And now what you've got is a turmoil of, I don't know what to do now. They're saying this, and they're saying this, I think this, I feel this, had a dream about this. And then you're just spiritually going in circles because I don't know what to do. But see, earlier we were face to face with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if we're in a place of face to face with God, all of the garbage and experiences and where we've been can be laid at his feet so that we can be depleted of that stuff and filled with him. Amen. Yep. He is wisdom. Amen. He doesn't just have it. Mm -hmm. Come on, with wisdom and understanding, he made the, all of the earth, the earth and the fullness thereof. Mm -hmm. Come on, he just, he sat back and he thought it through. Think about this. God thought before he spoke. Yeah. Yeah. Will I go there? I think I'll go there. <laughs> you ever... Open your mouth without thinking. Oh, yeah. Once. Come on. <laughs> and it wasn't God that came out. <laughs> and see, since, since our words carry creativity yes. and power, they influence what we say. That's right. Mm -hmm. Come on. Right. One of the things that's been lost is the wisdom of granddaddy. Amen. And I'm not talking about granddaddy's natural wisdom. I'm talking about a granddaddy face to face with God and has learned some things. Amen. And you Come can on. sit on the front porch. Now listen, you, you may be, you know, I don't have so many options like that. But, but there are people that God will put around you that function in the wisdom of God. Come on. That if you will take time to listen. listen. You'll hear things that'll change your life. Amen. Yeah. You'll hear things that'll keep you out of some of the messes that your lack of wisdom will set you right in. Yeah. That's right. That's good. Come on. That's right. That's a good word, Where is wisdom? You can't look around in the earth to find it. Let me drop down to some place because I want to get somewhere as we're going to be out of time before I know it. Job 28, let's drop, drop down to uh, verse 20. Where then comes wisdom and where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all the living and it's kept close from the fowls of the earth. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. 
God understands the way thereof, and he knows the place thereof. It. For he looks to the ends of the earth and sees under the whole heaven to make the weight for the winds, and he weighs the water by measure. He made a decree for the rain and the way for the lightning of the thunder. Then did he see it and declare it, and he prepared it, yeah, and searched it out. In other words, God didn't just mumble something off in creation thinking, oh, I wonder how that's going to work. <laughs> no, he, he intentionally thought about it. Amen. Knew about it. All about it. You understand? Not just, let's make some water. No, he understood all of it before he said it. That's wisdom and understanding. In other words, he enlightens me to know things that I don't even have time to always to study. I don't, I, you know, I don't have to fast for for three years to get a revelation for. You understand? Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not opposed to fasting. If God tells you to do it, you ought to do it. I just don't like doing it. <laughs> now he'll make me do it probably for open my mouth. <laughs> that wasn't wisdom. <laughs> But understanding is like revelation. It is like discernment. Okay? It's literally one of the definitions is discerning, I think. There you go. And what does discernment do? It knows between good and evil, what's God, what's not God. Right? Understanding comes along and it's that light bulb that says that's the Lord. And this is why it's the Lord. Wisdom knows what to do and understanding expounds upon the why. That's the way I like to see it. Wisdom tells me what to do and understanding explains why to do it. But you don't always get them both hand in hand. Sometimes faith has to grab a hold of wisdom when it tells you what to do and then understanding will follow later. And then you get your aha moment. Oh, that makes sense. I've been reading that scripture and I've never seen that before. Understanding. Mm-hmm. He just enlightened your eyes. He just brought a discerning matter. Now I get it. Come on, but how many of y'all know that you've got to come to the end of yourself sometime so that he can actually teach you something? Right. You're going to have to lay down all of your experiences and all of your stuff and just say, God, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Amen. Come on, yeah. Come on now. I heard a story, a pastor friend of mine was, that he was being told, this guy, he was in jail at this time. And, uh, you know, he, he was, I'm not saying he had jail time religion, but he was at least having a relationship while he was in jail with the Lord. And he said, one of the, the Lord came and visited him in the cell and said, um, I want you to tell me you don't know anything. That's a strange thing to say. He said, well, God, I can't tell you I don't know anything. I do know some things. He said, no, I want you to tell me that you don't know anything. And he wrestled with God over saying, I don't know anything. <laughs> and so finally he All tapped right. out and said, okay, God, I don't know anything. He said, that's right. You don't know anything without me. Mm -hmm. Understand? In other words, you don't know anything worthwhile yeah. without me. Anything that's worth knowing without me. I want to take this to the practical place with the, with the seven mountains. See, wherever God has called you to, wisdom and understanding needs to be a part of that. Yes. It's not about just wisdom and understanding and trying to know God in the scriptural thing and trying to just com comprehend Him. No, listen, it needs to be right down here in your everyday life, in your experiences, in your workplace. Amen. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're dreaming about, wisdom and understanding needs to be at the forefront of why you're doing it and the reason you're doing it the way you're doing it. <coughs> Come on. Otherwise, you're just going to follow somebody's formula somewhere or so your, your best ability and then it may just blow up in your face and then you're going to get discouraged because you did part of what God said except you left off his wisdom that you needed to do it. Come on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very possible to set out and do what God told you to do and forget about the most important things that you need while you do it. You can be blindly obedient 
and make a mess of it. Because you assume we won't go there. Come on. But check out what wisdom is. I love this. Verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Mm -hmm. And to depart from evil is understanding. It's discernment. Mm -hmm. To lose track, to get away from the consciousness, to know that this right here is me, myself, and I. It's not God. And this right here is the Lord. That's understanding. Yeah. But wisdom is that skill, that intelligence that comes along and says that God is holy. He is creator. He knows what he's doing. And I start from that place of he's right. That's wisdom. Because if I can say that he is right, then I can reverence and step back and listen to the one who is right in the room. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to say it again. Yeah. Yeah. In order to reverence the Lord, who is Adonai, who is the sovereign leader, who is master, who is owner, in order to do that, then there must be a submission to who is right. To the one who knows what they're talking about here. And if I will submit to his leadership, reverence him, say, God, you know what you're doing. Amen. You created the heavens and the earth. You got this under control. Now what I need to do is hear your heart, hear your wisdom, grab a hold of your understanding so that I am walking in agreement with you. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. Whenever I reverence him, I submit to him, I hear him, I follow him, that's wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. That means I got to let go of experiences sometimes, emotions, opinions, my own mostly. What's going on between my own ears has to find a back seat to what's going on in his heart. Yes. Amen. Come on, we're not talking about it always feels good, but wisdom will always be right. right yeah. The feels good has to catch up sometimes, y'all. Yeah. Sometimes you got to do some things with your knees knocking, but you know you heard from God and you do what he tells you to do. That's wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. Because I fear him, I reverence him, and I do what he says above what I feel. Come on. God, what are you calling me to? He's calling you to be wise. He's calling you to understand some things. But you're going to have to get depleted of those things that want to speak louder than him. And that is that face-to-face -face with God. If you don't make time for him, then you're going to find yourself struggling to know what to do. Come on. I'll fill some juice on that. If you don't stop and make time just for him, it's going to be very difficult to know what to do. It's good. It's true. Because you're going to have to rely on your senses in the natural and your natural wisdom and your natural understanding. And you're going to have to rely on, 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 on stale bread that what God said once upon a time. But what if he isn't telling you to do the same things anymore? Yes. Come on, and you just assume that this is what he's going to do because that's what he did. Yep. Just can't rely on that. He might do the same thing over and over and over again, but if you're doing what you're doing because he led you there, then there's going to be a grace and his presence on it. If you're doing it because it's what you've always done, you're going to find it's going to flatline and you're never going to get anywhere. So you're going to keep spinning your tires. Amen. Yeah, that's right. In other words, you can't rely on religion and you can't rely on what was. You're going to have to be near him and hear his heart and then wisdom will speak and give you intelligence Amen. and skill to know how to navigate something. Come on. Yeah, that's good. All right. I got other places to go with it. Is this all right? Yeah. It's good. All right. Proverbs chapter 9. I think I just want to read it out of this thing. There's a check in there. Nice. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 9. It 
And verse 1, wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, if you don't have discernment, if you don't know which is which, in other words, all right? He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct a scoffer. You know who a scoffer is? Somebody that mouths at you. Mm -hmm. In other words, I ain't going to spend too long here. <laughs> It's, it's somebody who's always got something to say no matter what you say. <coughs> you know, their mouths are moving faster than their brains. And maybe you've been like me, guilty of that. Y'all thought I was pointing the finger. I wasn't. I was really talking about me. I literally had the kids one time when I, when I when early on when I would talk to the Lord, my mouth would literally be moving. I'd be walking around the house and my mouth was moving. I'm talking to the Lord. I don't even know anybody else in the room and they're looking at me two and three, four years old. Like, Dad, why is your mouth moving? Ain't no sound coming out. <laughs> I don't even know I was doing it. But I'm talking to the Lord. Well, scoffers are the ones that are talking about the enemy. Their mouths are moving, but they ain't really saying anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing worth hearing. Yeah. You hear me? <laughs> Yeah. And we need to make sure we're not being those people either, that we're, re that we're releasing unemployed or empty words. Mm -hmm. All right? God don't need a bunch of scoffers. He needs some people who function in wisdom and declare the wisdom of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Where are we at here? Rebuke a wise man. Do not correct a scoffer, lest he what? Hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he's going to love you. A rebuke is not putting somebody in their place. Rebuke is pointing out what is right. Come on. Yes. It's, it's not about coming over somebody and saying, you're doing this wrong and you're doing this wrong and you're doing this wrong and you're doing this wrong. Listen, most people know. Rebuke is the correction that says, look here. You're making it hard on yourself. Mm. But if you'll do these things to change everything. See, that's rebuke. It's, it's not that we're afraid of pointing out what's wrong. It's that we need to be more conscious of what is right. And if you will listen whenever you need to be rebuked, when you need correction, when you need to change direction, and you need to hear what I need to do now, and if you will hear it and receive it, wisdom shows up and now you know what to do. Instead of meddling in the same old stuff over and over and over again and trying to make sense of life right now, God will show up and bring correction. And now you're doing what you ought to be doing. Come on, it ain't going to be big, deep, dark sin. Sometimes it's as simple as change your prayers. Right? Mm -hmm. Quit kicking the dead horse. He's dead. <laughs> right? Listen, if you find yourself repeating your prayers over and over to God, you're trying to manipulate Him. You're not really trying to ask get anything done. That's right. Y'all want me to leave that one alone? Yeah. Come on. It's a good one. I'm not saying you ought to be diligent in your intercession. I'm saying there's a difference between trying to manipulate God to do what you want by your much speaking scripture so that you're heard. God, are you listening to me? I've got some ideas about how we can handle this thing. <laughs> the fear of the Lord is wisdom. The okay. reverence of I found this. who you are. I submit to that. And I want to hear what you have to say. That's wisdom. And then he can add understanding. He can fill it in. Discernment where you know what's not God and what is God. You understand? Mm -hmm. This is what to do. And this is why. It's going to shift some things. Right? Alright, let me wrap this thing up. 
Verse 9, give instruction to a wise man and he will still be wiser. So there is such a thing as you might be smart, but you could always be a little smarter. Amen. You, you, you may have learned a lot, but you can always learn some more. Amen. Right? You don't ever get to the place to where you think there ain't nothing else God can teach you. If you do that, you're shutting off a flow so that he can tell you some stuff that you never even dreamed of. You ever notice that when you really go after him, things start opening up and you start learning some things and things start making sense again? And then about time you back off because maybe you made a mistake or maybe somebody offended you or God offended you or whatever went on, suddenly there's a distance. And as soon as there's a distance, then there's not a flow. It's not because he left. It's because that he can't move. And he can't even correct you. He can't even change you. He can't do anything if you won't give him access. But eventually what happens is, is we get sick and tired of all the craziness and we find ourselves on our face before God. Do whatever you want, Lord. Amen. That's all I was looking for. Yeah. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, it says. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's where I stop and he starts. If you'll listen to God, he'll make you a genius. If you listen to everybody else, you won't be any smarter than them. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not saying we don't seek counsel. The scripture says there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. Why? Because chances are in the midst of all of the counselors, God is going to say something. Come on, that's better than y'all just act like it was. Yeah. <laughs> there is a reason why you have surround yourself with good counsel because it gives God avenues to speak something that is wise. And it gets you outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Verse 10. Teach, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me, your days will be multiplied, and the years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you're going to bear it alone. If you just go around mouthing off and you always got something to say, then you're stuck and you're on your own. That's what it says. About time you get sideways with whatever thing and all you're doing, your mouth is moving, but you ain't saying a thing. You're isolating yourself. Yep. But if you'll yield to wisdom, you'll find yourself surrounded with truth and on the right direction. That's right, yeah. There are some doors that will not open until you listen to what he has to say. That's right. God can give you a prophetic word and tell you what he desires to do, but you need wisdom and understanding and counsel to walk into that thing to get there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. It's not just about God answer my prayer and do this thing, fulfill this thing. I've seen the Lord. I've heard the Lord. That's all great, but he does it by wisdom and understanding that I can discern what's not him and what is him. And I can skillfully and intelligently make decisions to get where I need to go. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. All right, I'm going to wrap that thing up. It's 1201. That ain't too bad. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, Lord, we just want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was thinking that we ought to do this. We ought to repent of everything that we have made a decision by, that we used the wisdom of man, the understanding of man. Listen, repentance will get us on the right track so that we can become more God conscious than self conscious and unconscious and man conscious and all the other consciousness. But if we'll make the decision that we don't want to keep doing that anymore, and we humble ourselves before the Lord, He'll fill us up with truth. So, Holy Spirit, I want to lead the charge. And being the first to admit that I have made, man-made, experienced, emotional decisions. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me. Now, listen, don't y'all keep agreeing for me only now. Y'all get your own. Some of y'all, yes and amen and in your spirit. I hear you. Maybe my wife. But, Lord, we do take seriously the humility of saying that when we have done things our way, it's been a mess. Yeah. 
So we want to choose you today. Yes. We want to just be humble and poured out before you. We want to wait on wisdom. If it don't speak in five minutes, if it don't speak in five days or five weeks or five months, God, we want to wait. But it's better to wait yes. for wisdom right. and hear that than to make a bunch of plans yeah. to fill time. That's so right. Lord, we want to wait on you. But we set our gaze. Listen, we're not waiting, doing nothing. We're focused on him. We're worshiping him. We're being depleted of junk and filled up with love. So God, we thank you for filling us with the spirit of wisdom and the consciousness that you desire to say something intelligent. Make us skillful in our trade. Make us skillful in our workplace. Make us intelligent beyond our ability. We thank you for the understanding to discern between which voice is which. Yeah. Which is you, which is me. God, I thank you for accurate and easy understanding from you. And we bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm thinking that one of the things that I want to get into on Wednesday night is tag onto this, but I'm going to get into uh, the different voices. The voice of experience. The voice of uh, pain. You understand? There are different things that we have walked through and all those things have something to say. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. And so if you make decisions based on the voices in your head, for a lack of better words, uh, sometimes you'll find yourself in a hardship simply because you didn't know there was another voice to hear. Yeah. So I'm thinking we're going to go down that road, but who knows by the time we get to Wednesday. So anyways, bless you guys.